I've been Cal and welcome to my world. Today I want to talk a little bit about the Nintendo 64. The follow up to the hugely successful, hugely popular, one of my personal favourite consoles, the Super Nintendo. The Nintendo 64 was now 64 bit, 3D capable and you know, something of a beast until all the systems came out. Um, the actual console itself has a, an odd shape, odd design, but I kind of like it. Uh, one of the more notable features was the four controller ports, which made for great multiplayer action. Um, there was, of course, a RAM extension, which I believe was it, um, upped it from 2 meg to 4 meg, or 4 meg to 8 meg. I can never remember and I can't get the uh, figure out to have a look. Um, so, you know, cool system, quite liked it, still used cartridges at the time when everyone else was going to CDs, uh, maybe not the wisest decision, but I don't know, I always really like cartridges, you know. Uh, the controller now, of course, um, big update from the Super Nintendo controller, still have the D-pad, there's a start button and now, you know, select button, got A and B and then instead of X and Y, you have these four C buttons, which were mainly really designed for the camera. Um, a Z button in the back as a trigger for shooting games mainly. Um, L and R still, and the analog stick, which um, to this day is still fantastic. Um, and obviously Nintendo have gone on to improve on the analog stick, and everyone else who's got into consoles has also used the analog stick. Uh, really great for moving about. And then one of the things here in the back is that you um, could put in a um, memory pack to save your game. Um, you can also save to cartridge, uh, like the older games, the uh, Super Nintendo, things like that. You can also now put it onto one of here and you know, take it with you, transfer it, put it, you know, play it at a friend's house, whatever. And then there was also rumble packs, which would uh, go in the same way. And obviously, controller would vibrate at certain times. Nowadays obviously rumble packs are built in to um, handheld uh, to the uh, controllers. That came out easier than last time. So it's a bit weird you know, having different things to work out. If you've got the uh, game pack in then you want to save to here, you have to take the game pack out, put that in. Uh, I believe the original idea, because uh, the whole thing about it was that you'd hold it like this and then use the back to the trigger for guns and then to reload, it would be literally doing that, like uh, taking out an empty magazine and putting one back in. Uh, it was never used, but uh, I would have loved to have seen it at least for one game, just you know, so we could say that we could do that, because it sounded like a really cool feature. Uh, so that's the controller. Some people love it, some people hate it. Um, I enjoy it for the most part. I think it's a, a nice controller, depending on the game that you're playing. Sometimes it can be a little awkward, but for the most part, I think they made good use of the controls in the games. And of course, the games are what I really want to talk about here. Um, this is my entire collection. There's uh, two rows here, and then one on top. I'm not going to talk about them all. Uh, same with the Super Nintendo, like I did. I just want to go through some of the highlights. So we will start off with my boxed collection. Uh, one of my favourite games to own. Um, one of the rarer games that I own, probably the one that I could sell to make the most money if I ever wanted to. And it is Conker's Bad Fur Day. Um, box is in uh, really good condition, all the manuals and everything are inside. A great game, uh, one of the more sought after games of the N64, because it was released um, towards the end of the system's lifespan. Not a lot of people picked it up, and as such, not a lot of people owned it, and uh, there's not as many copies out there to buy, so the ones that are tend to go for a higher price. It is a fantastic 3D platformer from Rare, whose name you'll be seeing a lot in this video, um, but of course, if you do want to own it now, and you have an Xbox One, they are bringing out a Rare collection, and this, along with most of the other N64 Rare games, are on it. So, I'm very happy on that, and I paid, I think it was about £15 for it boxed. Absolute bargain! Another Rare game, of course, boxed, is the Blast Calls. Despite the fact that there's a P in it, it is Blast Calls. Never really understood it, but it's a great unique game where there's basically a nuclear missile. Um, is 
it's defective and it's moving on its own and if it touches anything it's going to explode and kill everything. So your job is to use a variety of destruction vehicles to destroy everything in the missile's path so that it's clear, doesn't hit anything and you all live. Very fun game to play. And the last box game we've got, uh, the rare game, is Perfect Dark. A uh, fantastic shooter game. It's essentially, um, a, I guess, a spiritual successor to GoldenEye 007, um, made by the same uh, rare, same people. You know, similar style of game, same you know gameplay mechanics. It's just improved, in my opinion, and an actual better game than GoldenEye. It's just GoldenEye came first, and everyone remembers that. But both are still fantastic games. So glad that I have that. Boxed. I'm moving on to Unboxed, start off with my most recent pickup. Um, <laughs> this is actually the second time I've had to record this video, the first time the lighting was horrible. Uh, it was essentially, I was dark and there was a tiny bit of light here. Um, while I was recording the video, the post came and this was dropped off and it is Tonic Trouble. Um, a 3D platformer and a you know, guy, his limbs aren't attached to him, might look a little uh, familiar, kind of like Rayman. And uh, this was actually uh, done by Ubisoft, who would go on to make Rayman. So it seems that this was the uh, precursor to the Rayman games. I've not played much of it yet, but it seems like a fun game and one I would like to uh, dig into more at some point in time. Um, Lila Wars, another recent game that I got. This came in the Retro Gamer Crate that I did an unboxing video of. Um, click the link somewhere around here to uh, view that. Uh, Lilac Wars, for those that don't know, is um, Star Fox 64. Over here in Europe, we didn't get the games known as Star Fox until I think the GameCube era. Until then, um, for some reason, they just called them a different name. Um, I always forget what the Super Nintendo Star Fox games were called over here, but um, when they got to the N64, they decided to call this Lilac Wars because... No idea. Uh, it was my first time playing this to record footage for it for this video and I really liked it. I've never played a Star Fox game before. So uh, well, I'm definitely more interested in the Star Fox series now. One of the uh, classic games for the Nintendo 64, one of the main system sellers that came out with it. The first of its kind really, the fully 3D platforming game, Super Mario 64. Excellent game, excellent game uh, level designs, it still kind of looks great, all things considering. Um, although to me this is still the weakest of the 3D Marios, and I know that's sacrilegious for some people to hear. But it's true, just because of you know, the way that technology has moved forward and what Nintendo have been able to do, to do with, the, uh, with the later games, I just think this one you know, um, trails at the back of the pact. And that's not to say it's not a great game, it's still absolutely fantastic and I do believe all N64 owners need this in their collection. Um, one of the best wrestling games ever made, um, according to a lot of people. not entirely sure where I stand on it these days because there have been uh, quite a few good wrestling games. But of course it is WWF No Mercy. Excellent game, love the uh, grappling um, functions that we're getting it now, the controls are way better from the old arcade style wrestling games where they were more like beat em ups. Uh, the grappling system is great, you know, there's tons of uh, different wrestlers to pick from, great create mode, um, and then uh, the interesting career mode where depending on if you win or lose, different things will happen, your story will move a different direction. Um, definitely the one wrestling game everyone should own for the Nintendo 64. Um, a weird, interesting, unique 2D style platformer uh, was made by, is it Treasure, I think? Uh, it doesn't actually tell me on the front here. And it is Mischief Makers, one that I've not heard of until uh, a couple of years ago, uh, a while after I started collecting for the N64. I looked it up, looked cool, picked it up, and it is indeed a very fun, unique game. Uh, definitely one people should uh, check out. Uh, another 3D platformer and another Rare game. Um, I own all of the Rare N64 games except for four, which I'm looking to pick up at some point in time. This one, probably the worst of the bunch, 
just based on what I've already played, is Donkey Kong 64. It was an okay attempt, but you know, the controls are a little sluggish at times and there's far too much collecting that you need to do in the game. It gets a little monotonous. And you know, Rare did a much better job with uh, the likes of Conker's Bad Fur Day and a couple of other uh, 3D platformers that I will mention next. Of course, we'll start off first with the first one, Banjo Kazooie. Um, one of the uh, better 3D platformers ever made, according to most people, and I'd probably agree with that. Fantastic game, and of course, goes together with the sequel, Banjo Tui, which basically just um, built upon the first one and made everything better bigger levels, more stuff to do. You know, both fantastic games. I'm so glad we're now getting a spiritual successor in Ukulele from the uh, same development team. Um, now they're on, they've just recently been on Kickstarter, they've been successfully funded, I pledge to it and I'll definitely get to play it at some point in time. And of course these um, will be coming out on the uh, Rare Collection that's coming out on the Xbox One that I mentioned earlier. Um, another wrestling game, I do own a few for the N64 but there are only really two you need to know about, No Mercy and then on the WCW side of things, WCW NWO Revenge. This and the No Mercy game, they're both developed by THQ, they're pretty much both running on the same engine except this just has the WCW roster and the story mode and some of the match types out there. So it's a little stripped down but you know, it does, it does have an excellent roster and I do like playing it to play as guys like uh, Finlay, one of my favourites from WCW at the time. Another rare game, one that I've already mentioned, is of course GoldenEye 007. Still a fantastic game, although it doesn't really hold up as well for me anymore. But uh, it had a great multiplayer back in the day, a uh, great single player mode. Uh, it's the one that most people tend to remember and it's still, it's still a fun game if you can get past the awful graphics. <laughs> and then finally, the last game that I want to highlight is Rocket Robot on Wheels. Uh, a 3D platformer that I've not heard of again until uh, I basically asked for some uh, recommendations for the N64. This was mentioned, looked it up, looked fun, so I picked it up. 3D platform where he plays Rocket and Robot on Wheel. He only has the one, so I don't know why there's plural in the title. Um, it's a, a really fun game. It takes a little getting used to the controls as you're riding around on one wheel. But you know, it's a typical plot 3D platformer that you get at the time, really go do a bunch of levels to go through and objectives to complete. And it was made by Sucker Punch, who would go on to create the Sly Cooper or Sly Raccoon, depending on which reading you're in, uh, video games which a lot of people love and I've yet to play and I really want to. Um, so that's that. And those are all the games I want to talk through. Again, if you want to see all of my video game collection, check out my page over on bigcalsworld.co.uk and there's a list of all my uh, video games that I currently own. So that's the Nintendo 64. I'm very happy with my collection. There's maybe only eight more games I absolutely know I want in my collection that I don't currently own. Um, unfortunately, most of them uh, go for higher prices on the likes of eBay and things, so it could be a while before I pick them up, the likes of um, the original Smash Brothers, um, Mario Kart 64, things like that. But one day, I will own them. And that's the N64, a great console. I love a lot of these games, especially the 3D platformers. They're my favourite type of game, and the fact that the N64 has so many good ones means that I love this system. You know, I didn't really get to play much of it back uh, when I was a kid, as my brother had the N64 and I had the PS1, so I played the PS1 more. Um, so it's great now to be able to go back, pick up all these great games and play through them. And that's all for today. I'm Big Cal. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment, talk about some of your uh, Nintendo 64 memories. Let me know what games you own, what games you want to own. Um, I'll be sure to check them out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.